we are starting a new series in Waymaker this morning, looking at the I Am statements Jesus spoke in the Gospel of John. Other ones we're looking at this month are I Am the Light of the World, and then I Am the Good Shepherd. And today the one we're looking at is, of course, I Am the Bread of Life. There are seven of these altogether, and they're really important or profound statements. I'm going to start off by uh, reading some of the verses from John. If you are following, I'm actually going to start at verse 32, because otherwise if I read the whole passage, it would take five minutes, and that would use up quite a bit of the time allocated to, uh, to speak this morning. So John 6, 32 to 48, I'm going to read. 32. I tell you the truth. It it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It was my Father who is giving you the true bread from heaven. God's bread is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The people said, Sir, give us this bread always. Then Jesus said, I am the bread that gives life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, but whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you before, you have seen me and still don't believe. The Father gives me my people. Every one of them will come to me and I will always accept them. I came down from heaven to do what God wants me to do, not what I want to do. Here is what the one who sent me wants me to do. I must not lose even one whom God gave me, but I must, I must raise them on, all on the last day. Those who see the Son and believe in him have eternal life, and I will raise them on the last day. This is what my Father wants. The Jews began to complain about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. They said, This is Jesus, the son of Joseph. We know his father and mother. How can he say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus answered, stop complaining to each other. The Father is the one who sent me. No one can come to me unless the Father draws him to me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one who has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread that gives life. Heavenly Father, open our minds and hearts to your message this morning. Help me to speak clearly and explain your word. Amen. Now throughout the Bible, bread is a symbolic representation of God's life-sustaining provision. And it's good to look back in the Old Testament as well. Early on, God gave instructions to build a table called the Table of the Showbread. And every Sabbath, the priests of the tabernacle, and later in the temple, would arrange 12 loaves of bread called the Bread of Presence on this table. And this presentation of the bread symbolized God's eternal covenant relationship with his people and his constant care and provisions for the 12 tribes of Israel, represented by the 12 loaves of bread. When Jesus preached his sermon about being the bread of life, most Jews in the crowd would have connected the dots to this long-practiced aspect of their worship. And we also read in the Old Testament that God provided manna in the wilderness, a miraculous daily provision of food sent from heaven to save the Jews from dying of starvation in the desert. Unlike the bread of life that Jesus speaks of in this passage in John 6, manna was food that spoiled by the end of the day. Now, to put into context, the passage we're looking at this morning in John follows on fairly soon after Jesus fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. The next day, the crowds went in search of Jesus, not because they'd understood his miracle, but because he had filled their appetites. 
The people were caught up in the day-to-day -day treadmill of sorting out their lives and providing food for their hungry bellies. But Jesus was concerned with saving their souls. He told them, don't be concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. We read this in verse 27. The scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's in Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus would not be tempted to rely on his own power. He lived to do the will of the Father. My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work, we read. So I'd like, um, so lots of points we can make from this um, passage this morning. I'd like to make four points. And the first one is Jesus is essential. And in verse 35, we read, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Now this is a phenomenal statement. Jesus is equating himself with bread. Jesus is saying he is essential for life. And the life that Jesus is referring to here is not physical life, but eternal life. Jesus is trying to get the Jews thinking off the, the physical things and into spiritual understanding. He is contrasting what he brings as their Messiah, that is God's chosen one, with the bread he miraculously created the day before. That was physical bread that perished. He is spiritual bread that brings eternal life. He gives abundant life that will never end. So Christ explained that anyone who came to him in saving faith would never be hungry or thirsty again. God would not reject them, for it was his will that all should come to faith in him. This is in verses 37 to 40. Jesus said that he would not lose even one person whom the Father had given him. So anyone who makes a sincere commitment to believe in Jesus Christ as, savior, as their saviour has this promise. What a wonderful promise. The second point I'd like us to take away from this passage is that Jesus is God. So Jesus responded with this powerful and profound truth. I am the bread of heaven that came Sorry, the bread of life that came down from heaven, in verse 41. But in the following verse, they say, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I came down from heaven? Now, this verse is really important. Jesus is making another claim to deity. This statement is the first of these I am statements I referred to earlier. This phrase, I am, was also revealed to Moses at the burning bush in Exodus 3. God said, I am who I am. It is also a phrase that the Jews who were listening would have automatically understood as a claim to deity, i.e. that Jesus is God. The listeners knew that Jesus, by claiming to come from heaven, was declaring that he was God. He was the real bread of heaven, the ever-present manna, the life-giving, eternal source of provision for today, tomorrow, and all eternity. We do not earn favour by doing good things, so not from the work we do, but from whom we believe. And the first step is accepting that Jesus is who he claims to be. Look at the words hunger and thirst. Once again, I'd like to emphasize that Jesus isn't talking about alleviating physical hunger or thirst. The key is found in another statement Jesus made back in the, his Sermon on the Mount. 
in Matthew 5, 6, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Here, righteousness means being right in the eyes of God, i.e. having the right or correct character or nature, having the right conscience or attitude, <coughs> conducting ourselves correctly, i.e. the right actions and following God's commands. When Jesus says those who come to him will never hunger and those who believe in him will never thirst, he is saying he will satisfy our hunger and thirst to be made righteous in the sight of God. Well, the third thing I'd like to take away from the passage is that Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice. The people wanted his, this bread, but when Jesus explained that he himself was the bread, they became offended. Their offence turned to revulsion when Jesus explained that he had come to give his flesh and blood to sacrifice his life so that the world could have eternal life. John 6, 51. He declared, I tell you the truth, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. This teaching was so difficult to understand that some of his followers deserted him. Only those whose spiritual hearts have been opened could comprehend that to eat Christ's flesh and drink his blood meant to grasp by faith the significance of Jesus' death on the cross. It is the death of Jesus Christ that takes away the curse of sin and rescues those who receive his forgiveness from spiritual death. Christ's sacrifice on the cross enables us to receive eternal life. To all who believe in him and accept him as saviour, he is the bread of life. Jesus set the perfect example, although we will fall short of this and we shouldn't beat ourselves up too much. Jesus forgives these sins to make us right before God. The final thing I'd like to point out this morning is the words come and believe. This is an invitation for those listening in church or online to place their faith in Jesus as the Messiah and Son of God. Come and believe. This invitation is found throughout John's Gospel. Coming to Jesus involves making a choice to not follow the ways of the world but to follow him. Believing in Jesus means placing our faith in him that he is who he says he is, he will do what he says he will do, and that he is the only one who can. Part of our feeding on the, our daily bread means spending time each day in the word of God. According to scripture, the word of the Lord is more important than food to sustain our daily existence. Jesus showed us the importance of depending on God's word when Satan tempted him in the wilderness. After the Lord had fasted for 40 days and nights, the devil came and enticed him to rely on his own resources and turn stones into loaves of bread to eat. But Jesus resisted the devil's seduction with a powerful declaration of God's truth. No, the scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So, I encourage you this morning to remember that Jesus is essential. Jesus is God. And Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice for our sins. I encourage you to come and believe and accept Jesus into your life and to read more from the Bible. And if this talk has raised questions, come and talk to one of us. Let me just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and for your message we have been looking at from John 6 this morning. Help us to remember that Jesus is the bread of life 
and to focus on our spiritual needs, not just our physical needs. In Christ's name, amen.